Chapter 9, Lesson 5. We're going to be working with factors again and factoring, uh, factoring polynomials. And so what I want to look at is, this is actually called factor x squared plus b squared plus c. So if you look here, what we're going to try and figure out, we're going to try and figure out a way of, of making this expression here, x squared plus 5x plus 6. We're going to try and make that into two sets of parentheses with an x here and an x here. So that's our eventual goal, and then we can figure out what the roots would be if we set it up that way. So the way that this ends up working is there's a few rules, as there frequently are. So the method is actually called product sum because you have to figure out a way of, of making the last number into a product and then the second number into a sum. And this is easiest to see by actually doing it. So if you look here, we have your x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, that's what we're working with. So the first number we're always going to look at is this one here. And for 6, there's a few possible ways I can actually make a 6. And remember, it's actually a positive 6. So that's an important consideration. So a few possible ways of doing that. So one way of doing it is 1 times 6. Another way of doing it is 2 times 3. Another way of doing it is negative 1 times negative 6. Another way of doing it is negative 2 times negative 3. It's really important that you get the negatives down as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure out a way of adding, of choosing one of these where I can add them together and I'm going to end up with this number here. And the only possible way I can do that is going to be this choice right here. So it ends up being x plus 2 and x plus 3. So the reason why it has to be that way is because 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and also 2 times 3 is equal to 6. Because if we multiply this out, remember in terms of if we were to use the FOIL method and multiply this out, we'd end up with x squared for the first, we multiply this times this, then we're going to do the outer, it's going to be plus 3x, then we're going to do the inner, plus 2x, then we're going to do the last, plus 6. When we combine like terms, we're going to have x squared plus 5x plus 6. So that's the reason why we're breaking it down, because we can divide this in, and then we can find the roots. So let's look at another problem here. We've got x squared. I think these are the type of problems where if you see a lot of them, it becomes more clear as to how to do it. So what are the possible products here that will give me a positive 5? It's going to be 5 times 1 and negative 5 times negative 1. Those are the only two possible ways of doing it. So when I add those two together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and figure out a way of making this number here 6. So the first part is x. So it's going to be plus 5 and plus 1. And when I multiply that, you'll see, if you want to do it, that's going to be like that. So now let's look at this one here. This one's a little bit different. It's x squared plus 7x minus 30. So we're looking at minus 30, so we have to have a positive and a negative factor. So the possibilities are negative 6 and 5, negative 5 and 6, negative 3 and 10, and 3 and negative 10. Then we got 2 and negative 15 and negative 15 and, oh wait, actually negative 2. And uh, 
positive 15. I think those are all the factors. So we need to figure out a way of adding these two sets of numbers together to reach 7. So the only possible way of doing that, when you add these two together, you get 11. When you add these two together, excuse me, you don't get 11. You get negative 1. When you add these two together, you get 1. When you add these two together, you get 7, so that's probably it. When you add these two together, you get 7. Um, except for it's negative 7, and that's a really important thing here. So when you add these two together, you get negative 13. When you add these two together, you end up with 13. So now we look at this expression here, and now we look really closely here. It's actually subtraction there. That's right. And we look and we see, okay, well, where, what gives us a positive 7? And the only one that gives us a positive 7 is going to be this one right here. So the actual answer is going to be x, well, here, I'll write it up here, x minus 3, or x, and then x plus 10. So that's the only way of factoring this, so you end up with this full expression. I'm going to show you that just as a way of making it clear here. Because if I multiply this out, where I'm going to end up with this, I'm going to end up with x squared using the FOIL method, x first, then outer plus 10x, then inner minus 3x, then last. So it's going to be, in this case here, it's going to be minus 30. And so when we, multiply, when we combine like terms, it's going to be plus 7x minus 30. That's a beautiful thing because it works. It matches up. You can always check your answers. So for this one here, again, if you notice, we got two negatives. So we start off with negative 20. How do we come up with negative 20? We've got possibly negative, negative 2 and positive 10. We've got negative 10 and positive 2. We've got... 4 and negative 5. We've got 5 and negative 4. And we've got 20. We can't forget this one. 20. I might have forgotten that in the last one. And then 1, negative 1 times 20. So those are all the possibilities. So now I'm just going to look at this number here, negative 8. How do I, what, I'm looking for the one, for the two that add together to equal negative 8. Do they for this one here? No, that's going to be a positive 8. Do they for this one here? Yes, it's going to be negative 8. For this one here, when you add them together, you end up with negative 1. For here, you end up with positive 1. For here, you end up with negative 19. And for here, you end up with positive 19. So the only one that works is going to be this one right here. So the way we're going to rewrite this into two expressions with parentheses is going to be this. And that's going to be time, uh, plus 10. If we multiply that out, we would see that again, it would go ahead and actually, let's look here. Let me change that. I, I circled the wrong one. It's actually this one here that I'm supposed to do. That's really important to check, so let me change the signs. You can always check this afterwards and see. And if you multiply it out in your head, you'll see that I made a mistake. So it's going to be negative and plus. So when I multiply that out, it's going to be x squared, using the FOIL method, minus 10x plus 2x minus 20. So combining like terms, it's going to be x squared minus 8x minus 20, which is our original expression. So we're going to work on this a lot in class, but the main thing is you need to figure out, like for something like this, you need to figure out how to change for negative 120, what are the possible possible ways of, of coming up with negative 120. I'm going to list them. Okay, so those are the ones that I came up with quickly. And when you get to the one that actually works, if you keep in mind negative 7, then you're going to see that that's the one that actually you put in. So if I, I like to do it quickly here. Well, that one's not going to work because that's uh, negative 119. This one's not going to work because that's positive 119. This one's not going to work because if you add them together, you're going to end up with negative 26. This one's going to give you positive 26. This one's going to give you uh, negative, or it's going to give you positive 58. This is going to give you negative 58. 
And this one's going to give you negative 7, and this one's going to give you positive 7. So the one that works that gives us this negative 7 that we're looking for is going to be that one right there. So the way that the, when we factor it, it's going to be, it's going to be 8 plus 8, and then x minus 15. We will work on this a lot in class until you become comfortable with it, but thanks for watching.